Welcome back, mercenaries. The clash of the arenas is beginning. We're diving in here. This is episode three of our playthrough of the main storyline as part of the Great Gozenberg update. We are being drawn into the games to be able to befriend the wealthy brokers who run them so that we can gain more information as to the murder that we are investigating. And right now, let's offload. Ah, I got a little bit of information here. Interesting. That was something that I did not recognize uh, at the end of the previous episode, that we had gotten the brand new item. Let's drop off the cloth here. We are looking to be able to gain a little bit more food. Rations are starting to be scarce. And we also have uh, prosperity and glory to be able to figure out how we want to leverage the weapons of the champions from our previous victory. Ah, here is the arena. What is this little indicator? Is somebody over here to speak to? Hang on. Allow me to investigate. It seems to just be a floating particle effect. I don't see anything to be able to interact with over here. I don't know why the little... Um, that would be a brotherhood. Another mercenary band symbol is normally what I re assign that symbol to. It's a shield with the yellow. All right. Broker Godric Alda Bren, are you here for the arena clash? Perfect. So you're going to represent me, right? Right? I'm desperate in need of skilled champions to restore my arena's reputation. I beg you to do this for me, and I swear the reward will still be worth it. And they also have valuable information as to our main quest line, so of course, we are going to side here. Take the except 120 crowns. That barely feeds our company for a day. Oh, you won't be disappointed, I promise you. All I ask is that you win. It should be easy enough for warriors like you. Well, well, in the previous battle, uh, we... Got the we we were smashed the first couple rounds, absolutely smashed. Okay, before we go ahead and assign our units uh, to the new team, let's check out what do we want to do. So we have two swords to be able to equip Eowyn with. I understand they're blocked by the webcam here right now, but there one is going to be a two-handed weapon, prosperity, able to give us an AOE attack, the extra forty strength added on to Eowyn here. And the kicker here is that it causes a knockback, which we could use to be able to trigger a attack of opportunity from either our spearman or our archer. Or if the opponent is carefully put in a position where they cannot be knocked back, we do 150 extra damage. This seems like a great theory crafting style weapon. Or we could go glory and be able to maintain our shield, in which this is a much more defensively oriented item. If we are engaged with combat, then we gain protection for a round, uh, which will reduce the damage taken by 30%. Honestly, I say we go two-handed and we embrace the devastation that Eowyn might be able to cause here. As long as I can find where it is. There she is. I do love this bandit shield. Able to get the uh, the damage from shooting attacks down by 90% has saved me in some sticky situations. And also with the AoE, we've got the poison vial to be able to spread that out. I think... Did we have... Somebody took up a, um, a new trait in the previous battle that I don't believe I checked out. But anyway... Let us talk to everybody. The fighter. What a mess. I just left Berna's Arena. Well, we're the new champions. Situation has improved. It certainly has because we are now the new face of the organization. And this is questioning him about the murder. Elzar is behind the broker's murder. Well, okay, so this guy's just throwing out wild conspiracy theories. <laughs> Over here. Don't become like me, mercenaries. Above all, don't ever gamble. Uh, are you allowed to get is there any mechanic that we've been able to gamble in this game? I think the developers have kept us pr <laughs> Protected us from ourselves because you know I would be gambling on ourselves at the same time here Fighter Aletta can be questioned Okay, we uh, we gave her something for the um, The funeral previously, but we had not been allowed to question Don't repeat this to anyone, but I think that the rumors are true broker Brenna killed Walia Althovendorp he never got over the fact that his best fighters are left to join his rival, so he murdered her. So this is a completely different storyline than what we had started with following one of the broker's uh, sons who had fled because of gambling debts. Seems to be a common vice here. The source for our fight is only. If it's beer you're after, there's a vendor in the stands. Apparently, well, yeah. It'd be great to be able to use the shops. The shops after you win arenas are usually very interesting. Welcome to the Arena Clash, mercenaries, the most important event of the year, save for the Festival of Light. But who would you like to bet on? Who will win the title this year? That, that's me. I will. 
You're representing Burn as Arena. <laughs> ah, that's sporting of you mercenaries. But you don't stand a chance. Hovendorp won the title four years in a row. Broke up Brenna is completely out of his league. Eh, we'll see about that. Okay, so arena special rules. These always warp the game so much. On the previous arena, there was an enormous healing factor given to the opposing side. Here, when a unit is taken out of combat, the crowd throws incendiary flasks on a random unit from the opposing team. Incendiary flask, if it causes burning, burning has been updated to make it much harder to just remove. You either need to get a bandage, a healing effect on somebody, or you need to have a attack at, or an ability that causes movement. There's a number of abilities that do this. Um, run, obviously, but then there's some attacks that move as well, like um, Odo has one here. His relentless charge would be able to remove burning on him. Do I want to bring in Odo? I don't know. I'm tempted to just run the exact same team that I always run. Captain Jab always does incredibly well. AON with the new sword, you gotta try it out. And then the other ones are really our flex slots. Honestly, let's take the Odo. Odo very flexible, damages armor incredibly well. Big AOE attacks. If we can line up to hit two opponents... Oh, maybe the AoE isn't really good in the smaller scale combat. You want somebody who's able to focus the opponent down, which is going to be more Loki, more Snipe. Axe has always been a bedrock for us. I did run... I, I mean, we, we pulled the weapon onto Eowyn to be able to use the knockback effect. Now, do we want Axe or do we want Loki? Maybe we go... Is this crazy? Am I insane to bring in... Let's try Loki. Let's try him. Fight me. Register the team. Send us in. And here is our arena. So all of these traps are... Oh, these are fire traps. They are different. Walking close to this trap could trigger and start a fire, which will apply the burning status effect. So we want to either flank or get in the middle. We can also use our knockback out of Eowyn to be able to do some fun, fun stuff. Okay, rushing gale. I love the idea here of different traps that we can set up it only knocks people back two meters two meters is let me measure it out like this this is two meters I don't even know if that's far enough to be able to make it into hitting the trap there so I wonder if instead we bring up Narsa's shot and then align something like this take the shot Generate a little bit of rage when we attack at long range. We always gain this, and then we set up the barrage, anticipating the opponent here walking in towards us. Seems fantastic. Now we're also going to want to be careful of the crowd throwing in those incendiary flasks as an AoE. I'm not sure exactly how those flasks operate. Loki. I don't know what I want you to do. <laughs> you could get back and we can just kind of back away from this opponent yes this is a good idea okay so Loki you run into the middle and then negotiating around the traps so much fun come up here yeah take the slaughter let's just see what it does all right out of combat they leave now the crowd's gonna throw in then there it is burning onto snipe from the crowd terrible retribution let's go ahead and use right between the eyes and then let's i want to stay here because then i generate the valor point pass i can use the torch to be able to inflict burning but i want to be a little bit um cautious in the expenditure of our resources we have a number of battles a gauntlet to run the first one is always the easiest huck huck has boarding Deals 13 to 20 damage to the target and lures them into close range to engage them and also overbearing strike. I think this is a job for Jab. Jab can step up. It looks like the incendiary flasks are also applying... Interesting. They're applying burning. Well, obviously, they're applying fire to the map. <laughs> I am incredible. I'm not in verbose right at this moment. And it's, I'm making it worse as I'm trying to explain it. So here we go. Furate Riposte. We get the attack. I would love to be able to get the lure myself. That's always been kind of a hook of early access here of people have data mined 
the grapple hook for that ability, but it's never been released until now. Well, maybe it's not released now, technically. So we want to line up right here. Oh, but we could apply, we could apply the or the the knockback to knock them into the trap. I don't know if that's that relevant. I'm gonna take the damage here and be able to see what we can generate. Though I suppose first, do you break the guard? That feels like it would be quite useful. Eowyn has this dance of what do you want to use first? You can use the engagement to destabilize. You can use the taunt to apply weaken. You can just go for the basic because it's free. All of this. We get 53 damage back. We don't have nearly as much armor as I'm used to because of being um, missing the... That's the knockback. And the 78. Was that bonus damage? Okay. I'm going to have to get a little bit closer in to make sure that I understand these uh, interactions moving forward. But it feels pretty good. Now we're going to move back a little bit. Just keep her flexible and pass. I feel like I also had a thought there that I didn't finish in terms of the ordering of how you attack with Eowyn. Huck wants to go, but if he moves, Jab just kills him. So let's work on Adelo. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, let me double check. Hardcore training, the unit is immune to bleeding, poison, or burning. When they should be affected by these effects, they gain two rage instead once per effect per round. Which means we should be able... Yep, there's the rage. Okay, now I want to get close enough to be able to go rushing Gale. Strike. Knocks them through the trap. Applies burning. Gets shot. That's the combo that I wanted to see come together. Now we step in. We get a guaranteed print here. Oh, maybe we need to move to Eowyn to a two-handed weapon. I mean, she is psycho. And they throw out all the burning. We're going to be hit with so many status effects, guys. Pass. Who's next? Loki, finish this. At least burning doesn't do any immediate damage. I feel like we could have a winning team here. But as I said, the first round always lulls you into a false sense of security. So uh, we don't want to get too cocky. Praised crowd fulfilling a requirement grants two additional valor points. I've never had valor points be that much of a challenge. Let's take the improved dexterity. We do have two um, dexterity-based damage dealers, and we have a new special rule in the arena. Enemy units gain the rage status when they are burning. Uh, rage just gives them plus 5% damage, I believe. I hope that means that they are still burning, though. So then, Eowyn, you certainly need to repair your armor. Everybody else is doing great, so let's max out our valor points. Yeah, nobody, el nobody else even took damage? Maybe we could be looking at a new arena champion. I sure hope so. Though I'm not going to kid myself that we're going to win on the first round. Okay, this is a fascinating deployment with a little bit of a scattering here. So we still have only four opponents. Zula with the sword and mace. Thunderous blow. If engaged in combat with an ally, this skill forces them to disengage the ally and inflicts an attack of opportunity. That's very powerful. And then shield slam giving fragility, which is actually an attack out of the shield. Amazing. And then they've also got head bash at the end of their turn. Deals 11 health damage to the closest target. To the closest target. This used to be that it didn't even have to be in melee, but I think it does have to be in melee. I hope it has to be in melee. And then we have right between the eyes, the dagger thrower. Over here, the hook. And then overbearing strike. Dealing double damage if the target's health is higher. I assume that is higher than Greta's, who has 96 health. She's uh, quite healthy. Yeah, she's got more health than all of us uh, right now. We'll drop her down. And then Joltrunda, also shield and hatchet. And then the fire line, the dividing combat. I don't really like that. Let's get jab sliding around. I want him closer to Loki to potentially be able to connect our forces. Go for a strike. Are you... Ah, yes. Loki is applying fragility. Helping us get some better opening attacks here. Pass. We gain fury. Repost. Ah, Jab. Getting work done. If they do a hook here, it's going to drag us through the trap. That would have me a little bit worried, but not too much. Okay, they're able to disengage. They apply fever, and they've got right between the eyes. 
Aowen, do you think that you can knock them into the trap and then apply burning? I don't know. Russian Gale? You can! Okay, so they're Rage and Burning together. Fantastic. Now, we want to get Burning because that's just Rage onto Aowen. And then we finish them. <laughs> the punny enemy. Uh, move a little bit. They all, uh, Thankfully, they fixed the interaction where <laughs> you can just keep walking back and forth in the fire and stack up Rage basically infinitely on the Swordsman. It was hilarious, and I loved doing it, but I'm kind of glad that it's gone. Honestly, I think that we should run through the fire, through the fire and the fury, and then be able to position ourselves up here. Take the Narciss shot, line up the barrage, and pass. Burning gives us eight damage, but this is all right. Ooh. What? That is insane! The overbearing strike! Good gosh. Loki, how are you alive? <laughs> also, it's your turn. I can't get healing to you. Yeah, it's Loki's turn. I mean, okay. Well, Loki can finish this. We need to run so that the burning doesn't kill him. There. Now they'll throw an incendiary flask. There it is. I don't know what I want to do with Loki. Probably move up this way and then pass. Opponent comes in up against Eowyn. Eowyn getting the repost with the counterattack there. And that's the headbutt for the bonus damage. Zula must die. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. What is the best order of operations? We can cancel here, run up with jab, make the strike, apply. I want to apply spear wall, but I also don't want. I can't be standing as to Aowen when I do it. There we go. Yeah, we take the burning. It's only 12 damage, though. So. Now Aowen goes, knock him back. This will allow Jab to trigger. We get the extra attack. The opponent is dead. Oh, and then because they didn't get knocked back, they got the bonus damage because the spear wall holds them in place. It's that combo. I didn't realize it was going to be that good. But it is so good. The bonus 150% damage? My gosh. Okay, now we have a path forward. I think that could be something that could legitimately tear the champion to pieces. Let's go increase damage from critical hits. Confirm. Allies now gain vulnerability when they are burning. Everything revolving around fire. This is really hard. This is really... What do you do with Loki at one health, no armor, and an arena that revolves around applying the burning status effect? I think you go... Armor. <laughs> It's a little bit more. It means that I can never let Burning actually take over on Loki. But he does have the run to be able to get it off of him. And then we want to just be cautious with Loki so that they don't go out. Aowen, you're pretty tough. Now the question is, who generates Valor points for us? Because we want to go in strong up against the champions. So you, Snipe, can generate Valor points. You stay pretty far back anyway. Let's make sure that you have full health jab, and then Aowen, you take a lot of damage on the armor. That's just how it's going to be. You can only do so much. Really love the roguelike minigame elements that they have here. Okay, Martijan must be engaged in combat at the end of a round. Who is that? It is you. And we have this beautiful X pattern with, again, the incendiary traps. Loki squaring off some against someone that I don't want them to have to deal with. What's our combo? We could have... Uh, I definitely want Aowen and Jab to be able to play that tag team game. But here, Martigen 
Marge is going down with no guard value, Eowyn could outright kill him. Just immediately. Before they get a turn. And then still be able to cross and tangle with somebody else because we have good movement and we don't care about burning on Eowyn. Alright, I think we have a path forward. Who's going next, actually? It is you. Alright, I will leave uh, Snipe. No, this is going to be Loki then. Because if Eowyn is able to cross and engage... Okay... You still can? Yes, we still have the movement. Fantastic. So first, it's destab... Oh. <laughs> one hit, one kill. Psycho. And then even give her the free rage. It's insane. If I knock the opponent back, I might not be able to engage with them if I use the basic. I only have one meter of movement, but I have two meters of knockback. So do I just taunt? I might just taunt for Loki's sake. We get the weakening, we engage, we get the valor point back, and now we let Loki tee up on him. Now I don't mind if they take a crack at AO in here, so this could be our opportunity to prep Snipe for a little bit of protection. Let's see. The opponent over here wants to go next. We can have Jab come over. I don't know. Maybe we actually just take the turn with Loki then. Loki step up. Go right between the eyes. Take the slaughter. Always attacking directly from behind because you have an extra 30% um, crit chance. And then moving back here to be able to apply the tactical order. Get the little bonus strike. 48 extra damage. And we're going to pass here. Gaining the Valor Point. 11 damage, Eowyn's able to counter. That's the attack of opportunity or the headbutt. The opponent is out, and the incendiary flask landed on Jab. There is so much going on in these battles, guys. <laughs> Let's run Jab off to the side, be able to make this strike, and then spear wall, aiming to lock them in place. 12 damage from the fire, which means that we gain vulnerability here. But we force them to pass their turn. Now, Snipe, you're not in a good spot. I can tell you that right away. But maybe... Nah, the opponent can reach the whole map in their range as well. Okay. So, we'll just kind of back into the corner here. <laughs> oh, I moved you too far. Step up. Make the attack. Actually... We could uh, line up the barrage, which is just going to kill them before they're able to take an action. That worked out. They cost us two Valor points to be able to get, but I think we're going into the battle with the champions with enough Valor points to be fine. Eowyn, you can just finish this guy, right? Yeah, exactly. This is, this is where the Russian Gale comes in and KOs him. Just immediately. Bring on ye champions. This is actually a tight choice on selecting the gift pressure or improve strength. All enemies start the battle with vulnerability. We already have two enemies starting the battle with vulnerability because of Loki. But being able to get the other two on vulnerability... Ah, we're just going into the battle with the champion, so they probably will have vulnerability. We'll go improve strength. We have two strength-based damage dealers. Now Loki can actually heal up because they... We've been smacked around. Snipe, you're still generating more Valor points. Uh, I don't know what this champion is going to is gonna bring. Do I need to really try and top up, or do I want all the Valor points? Valor points does help, especially if it's a dragged out extended fight. Let's take it on. Headstrong to take him on. I can't wait to unravel this puzzle. First run up against the new champion. Who are ye, and what do you do? Trevetta Raniel. So many abilities to unravel here. These boss fights are always quite the puzzle. We've got potentially a new hatchet here for Axe to be able to win. Victorious. Trevetta Raniel has diligently marked every arena class she's won using Victorious on the weapon's handle. 
Strength plus 28, Infused Axe Skill, uh, which we're going to read all the skills down here. Deals 68 damage to the target, guaranteed critical hit if the target is burning. Okay. So don't start burning. Which thankfully the incendiary flasks are going to be under control because we're not knocking anybody out, but I'm sure she has other ways to be able to apply burning. <laughs> incendiary flask throw, deal 46 damage to all the units in the area, then create a fire. Ah, fire resistant, immune to fire damage and burning. When the unit is in a pool of flames, their damage increases by value 1 colon colon percent. <laughs> I don't know. Fire resistance, champion. I mean, hopefully it says here, up here, what their damage increase is going to be. Equipped with incendiary flasks, uh, when this unit takes damage, an incendiary flask explodes randomly around them. Excuse me? When this unit takes damage... Can use multiple abilities in the same round. Damage over times are only triggered at the end of the round and cannot be captured. But we do have fragility applying here. Incredible. Level 9. Oh, by the way, 30% guard, 800 armor, 500 health. <laughs> and they're going to start out with an incendiary flask throw, follow up with the infused axe, and that's their whole round. It looks like a lot of their damage generation is going to be on the ag or the, the incendiary flask explosions and then the guaranteed crits uh, out of this, which is going to really pop off. It actually is. Let's get Jab up here. Come on up, my friend. Take the horse strike. Get a little bit of starter damage for us. There's the explosion, and we're already burning. Great. Spear wall me so that they're locked in place. And we take the burning damage. Now it's snipe. I want snap, snipe to be able to get in there and then heal the burning off. But if they do, they... Well, hang on. We can run. We can run. Okay. You run into the fire. Was this worth it? It can't have been worth it. I think we just wasted a lot of valor points, honestly. Then we want to back out. Which removes the burning, and then locking up this little uh, range finder. We take the Narciss shot, make the attack, randomly throws out more fire, line up the barrage, and pass. Now this is when they're going to throw a flask. It does 31 damage directly as well. Yeah, that's a huge fire. Thankfully, Eowyn is also immune. I think Eowyn being immune is actually going to be a huge deal. Okay, get the fire. Oh, we already got the rage. We already got the rage of this round is what they're telling me. Now, now we get to play a little bit nasty. So we go right in destabilizing strike. Oh, is this attack of opportunity going to like kill me? But that takes away their guard value. So now all of our damage is gonna be much higher. And they are, yeah, destabilized for two rounds. Rushing Gale me, gets the knockback and then all the extra attacks. 73, stab, shot, extra 150 damage. Ah, it did not trigger. It did not trigger snipe, actually. Interesting. Well, now I would like to move around and go ahead and taunt you to weaken you. And that's Eowyn's turn. Loki. I mean, Loki could just kind of slow roll things. Stand out here, throw in the right between the eyes, be a little bit passive, or we could dive right in. We have the Valor points, we might as well spend them, right? We're gonna pick up the Burning, we're gonna come up, Slaughter is gonna be able to gain Rage for us, and then right between the eyes, crack them again, not a lot of damage. Not at all a lot of damage. And now I have to go run to get Burning off, which I think is worth it, and we'll just hang out right around here. Now the opponent is going to try and make their attack, thankfully, because Eowyn is engaged and Eowyn is immune to burning, they don't get the guaranteed crit. <laughs> oh, baby. That counterattack through a post out of Eowyn is insane. Were you... Fragility was applied again? Every... It does. It gets reapplied every round by Loki. Now we get the guaranteed crit out of Destabilizing Strike. There's a new champion in town. That's for sure. 
Let's go. That that combo of the spear wall with the Russian gale is psycho. I wish you'd lost. Nothing personal, but no victory means no bonus for me. Finally, uh, one has to be a good sport, eh? At least you gave us quite a show. Take your prize. Recipe sent to uh, Burnin's Arena. We gain the victorious axe and 150 crowns. Honestly, maybe it's time. Axe had been running with the splitter, the two-handed weapon, for so long. Maybe we give the shield over to him. He takes victorious. Meanwhile, we have Aon rocking the two-handed weapon of mass destruction. We have Malvina Aldhovendorp here. She's new. And we have Broker Godric. All right. You won! You did it! Uh, burn I'll never walk alone. Burn I'll never walk alone! <laughs> ah, yeah! Happy with this reward? Ask me anything. You are my little champions, my favorite heroes. Yeah, yeah, so did you murder the broker? I wasn't expecting a question about Walla. I know it's not very respectful of her memory, but I'm glad that she's joined the light. That woman spent her whole life trying to ruin my family. The Burners have always opposed slavery, so when we finally got the chance to vote for its abolition at the Broker Council, I thought our time had finally come. I was so certain the reform would pass that I hired people, bought mines, and businesses. But at the last minute, while I turned the council against me, they voted to keep slavery. All my investments were lost and nearly destroyed the, my family. Ah, all right. Malvia? You could have lowered Hovendorp's arena win. It was the least you could do. Pay your last respects to my late mother. Or not. I'm not going to take any pricks to my pride from you, broker. Godric Aldbreda looks a bit too pleased with his victory. I would keep an eye on him if I were you. He seems on edge at the moment. Indeed he does, but I don't think he would have resorted to murder. Ah, another day, another legendary weapon added to the pile. <laughs> Unfortunately, Victorious has all this synergy with burning, and right now on the team, I don't have a way that I'm really applying burning. You can go to one of the stylish bows that do the, the burning shot that applies to be able to gain those guaranteed critical hits. It would be very fun. There's a number of other build options here. The The web of combat is so wild here in War Tales, so much freedom. But we have this piece of information here. I know it's covered again by the webcam. But we have meet up tonight at Hovendorp Mine. Bring shears and don't forget to burn this note. Hovendorp Mine. Do we know where Hovendorp Mine is? It looks like we are going to do a little bit of exploring to be able to pick up the next line of our quest. We should probably follow the uh, the paths initially to be able to discover the different locations. See where things take us from there. But that bit of information appears to be our next lead in terms of the main storyline. And actually, we should just camp here. The victorious champions deserve a rest. A rest and a raise, they say. We'll, we'll scrap the raise. Put the venison over here. And then go ahead and chow through our our fruit and vegetables. Oh, that's amazing. Those little crop circles out here from aliens. <laughs> uh, we'll have to investigate that sometime. little camp secret down here. Hang on. Inspect me. There's always goodies here. The camp was abandoned recently. Perhaps it belonged to a slave. We have rags, lockpicks... And chains. I'll take them. Sure. They're usually quite valuable. Uh, caravan, caravan, are you selling salt? Salt me? No. I actually have already uh, bartered with you earlier today. Fantastic. The mine. So we have a little... Yep, the fishery. There's always a fishery. Well-earned fishery. Quite the name. Now, guys, are you selling salt? Uh, no. You have grease, but no salt. Okay, fine. I will wait a little longer. Eat to the raw materials. Is this the mine? No, Great Growler Cave. Interesting, but the mine is likely to be around here. Armen Estate. Is it going to be up in the mountains? We have a lot of exploring that we need to do, honestly. Ah, the rust field. This is the brand new... Okay. We're putting the main quest on hold. We're going to play 
Rust, the new minigame added in here, but we're going to do it in the next episode. If you guys have been enjoying the series, so show some love on the video. Let me know if I'm missing anything or there's something that you want to see me potentially test out. I am all game for that after all of the guides that I have done for the game. I love trying out new things. Till next time, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.